to kick off 2017 than right here at Scarborough Methodist Church. Every village in Tobago has a church or chapel, and visitors are always welcome to join in on the service, regardless of their religious beliefs. This week's episode is part two of our Year in Review, where we capture our biggest stories of the year. I'm Davia Chambers, and Let's Talk Tobago starts now. Tourism properties get upgrades. We take you to the Modern Genetic Center and later details on the new multi-producer units. We recap these stories and more when Let's Talk Tobago continues. We'll be right back. I'm Newton George and I'm a tour guide specializing in bird watching. I really got into this thing too. My dad who was a hardened birder and he was the custodian of Little Tobago. I started to do bird watching now as a career because of my love for these birds. And it has taken me to Africa, to Brazil, to Germany, to India. Bird watching is a part of the tourism industry and tourism is all our eating. I was introduced to the marine environment by my biology teacher when I was 14 years old and I decided to make it my passion. So I've been diving for almost 32 years. I decided, listen, this is the job for me. I also find great joy in introducing the kids uh, to that environment because that's our future. I am Alvin Douglas. I'm a dive shop operator at the Store Bay Beach facility and tourism is all a we take. Welcome back. We're at the Scarborough Methodist Church. The Society of Wesleyan Methodists established a missionary in Tobago in the year 1818. It was in 1823 when donations for the construction of the Wesleyan Chapel in Scarborough commenced by missionary Reverend John Nelson. Now, do you remember the initiative aimed at addressing the quality of room stuff in Tobago? Well, it goes beyond cosmetic quick fixes and encourages local hotel and guest house owners to elevate the physical standards of their establishments. Here are the details. Owners of hotel accommodations in Tobago can improve the quality of their properties through a new initiative, the Tourism Accommodation Upgrade Project. Through the program, owners will be reimbursed 20 to 25 percent of the cost of improvement works done on the tourism accommodation, up to a maximum of $75,000 for one to five rooms and up to $750,000 for six to 150 rooms. I have to do a complete renovation. I'm repainting, I have to change all the AC units, I have to remodel the rooms, I have to remodel the fencing, I have to remodel the grounds. And this initiative could not come at a more opportune time. I think it's great and it's going to help me to complete that, that, those exercises. I think it's fantastic. Although this will help to develop the quality of the rooms stuck on the island, property owners are being urged to develop partnerships with other tourism stakeholders, something that they have already started. We have guided tours um, from many of the cruise ships and it gives them an opportunity to hear a bit about the history of, of Tobago, a bit about the history of Plymouth, um, a bit of the history of our establishment and what we do for conservation. All registered and approved tourism properties operating for more than four years are being encouraged to maximize the benefits of the Tourism Accommodation Upgrade Project. On location at the Division of Tourism and the Transportation, I'm Juliet James reporting for Let's Talk Tobago. In 1841, the first district synod was held in the Scarborough Church. Methodism quickly spread throughout Tobago. There were nine Methodist churches by the 1880s and eight primary schools where emphasis was placed on the education of slaves. Now this story is a fishy one and takes us to the community of Bell Garden where we learn how a new facility helped the fishing business in this countryside village. Here are the details. 
For generations, this is the bay where Bell Garden fishermen brought in their catch to be sold on the beach or at the roadside. That's now changed with the opening of their very own fishing facility. It's equipped with modern sanitary amenities such as stainless steel countertops, a machine for waste disposal, and a freezer room for storing their catch. One fisherman explains how the facilities will improve the way he does business. Many of us plan to move from this small boat system into bigger boats, right? And um, one of my retirement plans was to go for an ice boat. And once we have facilities like this, we could anchor right here rather than have to go to Scarborough to anchor where you can get ice and other things. A facility like this, where you can come in with your large catch, where you can be able to get good storage and everything. The facility also has a meeting room, wet room, walk-in chiller, ice machine and a rest room. The fishermen are also grateful for the security features. We're hoping that this lighting facility that is in place will be able to help as a deterrent to those who have the mindset to relieve fishermen of their equipment. The Division of Agriculture, Marine Affairs, Marketing and the Environment, which is responsible for building the facility, is encouraging both fishermen and consumers to embrace the more modern and hygienic ways of handling and selling fish. We are charged with, with the responsibility of having a product sold to you safely in phytosanitary conditions. If you can't provide the steel table out there, if you cannot provide the ice out there, if you cannot provide the sanitary countertops and nice flowing water out there, then you have no competition. You have no other choice but to come down here. This facility is seen as a very important step in creating a more sustainable fishing industry on the island. I'm Omadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. The man's building was completed in 1826 where the initial arrangement was for the minister and his family to live in the space above the congregation. Years later, the building would be relocated next to the church. Now few things equal the feeling of pride in home ownership as we're about to see with this group of happy people. They take possession of their brand new townhouse at Adventure. Have a look. These people are having a feel-good moment. That's because they have been able to meet the financial requirements and are now being presented with their new homes. Townhouses located at the Adventure Phase 2 housing development. I'm very excited and elated. I think it's one of my best Christmas ever. One of the 13 recipients in this batch says that she appreciates the DHA's move to subsidize the homes by approximately 50%. I think this Adventure Phase 2 is a really nice initiative for the people of Tobago. It has made homes available to Tobagonians who could not have afforded homes at luxurious prices. The townhouse construction is facilitated by the Division of Settlements and Labour. It is one of the avenues the division uses to meet the needs of many of the island's housing applicants. This division has given you the opportunity to share celebrate with your friends and family. So this function today is no doubt an exciting moment for you. You can now say to your friends and family, welcome to my home. Another key distribution ceremony will take place in the early part of this year. I'm Umadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Up next, we take you to the Modern Genetic Center. Let's Talk Tobago's Year in Review will be right back. Stay with us.
thanks for staying with us. This is Let's Talk Tobago. The Dorcas Hope Memorial Building was constructed around 1930 by Isaac Hope, a member of the church. The building was constructed to be used as a Sunday school for children to receive their first exposure to Christian teachings. We all want meat. And how do we want it? High grade, of course. Well, have no fear. Science is here to breed quality livestock for Tobago's unofficial national meat. Check out this story. Whether you want rosy pigs, rabbits, or goats, livestock farmers in Tobago will be able to source genetic hybrid stock for animals right here in Tobago through frozen cement or the live animals themselves. How is probably your big question? Well, the artificial insemination unit at the Hope Farm is being transformed to a modern genetics center. The whole idea is to do the breeding, do all the, the genetic um, work behind the animals to get them to where we want them to be in regards to the class animal, whether it's for, for milk, uh, for meat, and the different type of meats like in, in the pigs if they want it for ham or beef, no, whatever it is, that we could breed the animals according to what is desired. Rabbits are also on the list. Mr. Jones says the production of rabbits is increasing in Tobago and having a reliable place to get breeding stock at an affordable price is critical. Rabbits is one of the things that we really want to push. So we're looking at maybe importing some hybrid um, stock, the same thing with the small ruminants, to bring in imported semen along with using the local extended semen. Um, the same thing for the cattle. And if you're questioning reliability, Mr. Jones says have no fear. The modern genetics center will be there. We used to provide artificial insemination services primarily for pigs and rabbits. Um, before, we used to do five different classes. We used to do um, sheep and goat, as well as cattle, pig, and the rabbits. So, and then things um, demise for a little bit, but now we're trying to revive it, but revive it in a more modern, um, even having more of a scientific approach to livestock production rather than just the um, ordinary production systems. The center falls under the responsibility of the Division of Agriculture, Marine Affairs, Marketing and the Environment and will be completed by August 2016. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. The ringing of the church bell of the chapel on the hill every morning alerted both students and workers of the time to get going to school and work. The bell was also rung on Sunday mornings for church service. Last year, Tobago commissioned its first fresh produce packaging house to help farmers keep their produce fresh and to meet international standards. Here's more in this report. No longer will farmers have to worry about losing produce and money due to a lack of storage for their excess goods. That's because the first fresh produce packing house facility has been commissioned. The facility will provide the ideal conditions for sanitization of fruits and vegetables, a proper grading system, and the provision of appropriate packaging. Factors that will ensure farmers can export their goods at a high quality. So what we're going to do is maintain appearance, texture, flavor, and nutrition value. We will protect food safety and reduce losses, both physical loss and market value loss. So this packing house will ultimately be the focal point through which fresh produce safety is assured. There will be the provision of cool and cold storage facilities, testing to ensure that produce is free of harmful bacteria and the opportunity for company labeling and branding. It's a facility that adds a new dimension to the agricultural sector. It's a facility that's going to help the farmers in Tobago to upgrade themselves because this facility provides an avenue whereby farmers will be able to produce in a more efficient manner, they'll also be able to, to grade their facilities, grade their produce, and be able to open up new markets in terms of packages and so on, packaging their produce and so on. The Fresh Produce Packing House is the responsibility of the Division of Agriculture, Marine Affairs, Marketing and the Environment. The facility will ensure there's less wastage of fruits, vegetables and provision so that farmers can provide consumers with better quality foods. You will be getting more clean vegetables, more secure vegetables and 
vegetables that will benefit you on a whole because it is protest, processed properly. So I think it will benefit the people also. Just recently, a workshop on fresh produce safety was held for those in the food and agricultural industries. It means they are prepared to meet the sanitary standards for processing fruits and vegetables at the packing house facility. I'm Omidara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. In 1968, the Tobago Methodist District celebrated the 150th anniversary of the Wesleyan Methodist denomination with services right here in the Scarborough Church. Today, the church is pastored by Reverend Philbert Delaney, who began preaching at the Scarborough Church in September 2016. In our next recap, we remind you of one initiative aimed at minimizing waste at the island's landfill and reducing possible mosquito breeding sites. Have a look at this story. This simple machine is doing its fair share for health and the environment. It's fed with whole tires and uses cutting wheels to shred them into little chips. Why is this important? It's going to make this pile of tires more manageable. We partner with Swimcall Trinidad. They would have sent the tire shredding machine up to Tobago. This is just one of the initiatives that we have, but we have a lot of other initiatives for waste man minimization in Tobago. Discarded tires take up a lot of space, so shredding helps reduce the volume. They're also a perfect breeding place for the Aedes aegypti mosquito, as they can hold fair amounts of stagnant water for a long period of time. That's why unwanted tires also pose a health risk. Waste minimization and waste management is something that we're trying to do up at the landfill. And this is part of the waste minimization project that we have because it reduces the amount of waste that we have up here because the tires take up a lot of space. So it greatly reduces that amount and also to, com to combat Zika, right? We know that tires act as a breeding ground for mosquitoes. So that is also part of the initiative to get rid of those tires and to reduce the breeding grounds. The next logical question is, What's going to happen to the shredded tires? There are a number of different uses for the shredded material, but what we would be using it for, the garbage that we collect daily, it's usually covered, and we cover that with the dirt. So what we're going to do is mix the material from the shredded tire along with the dirt to cover the garbage that we have up at Study Park here. The exercise was carried out in partnership with the Trinidad and Tobago Solid Waste Management Company Limited, Swimcall, which provided the tire shredding machine. I'm Kuni Freitas for Let's Talk to Bego. It's time to take a break, but when we return, we give you details on the new multi-producer units. Don't go anywhere. Let's Talk to Bego will be right back. It actually started for me 13 years ago when I worked as a CSR at Club Pigeon Point, which is now known as the Pigeon Point Heritage Park. I knew that I had a knack for being a guide. When I started talking to different people from all different walks of life and just telling them about our culture, the history, the food. I am Katya and Grant, a trained tour guide, and tourism is all I with you. Welcome back. You're viewing Let's Talk Tobago's Year in Review. A fundraising effort was launched in 2008 to source funds to renovate the church as it was in need of urgent repairs. Because of major contributors such as the Tobago House of Assembly, the National Gas Company and members of the congregation, work commenced here in March 2012. 
Now, the Eco Industrial Development Company of Tobago has expanded tremendously over the past year. From offering courses for students to learn a new skill, to constructing a few more multi-producer units for entrepreneurs to have a place to market themselves. Caroline Wallace has all the details in this report. If you're an agro-processor, this space can house your business. It's one of two new multi-producer units at the Cove Eco-Industrial and Business Park, which will help to facilitate economic development on the island. According to the Chief Executive Officer of the Eco-Industrial Development Company of Tobago, Bernard Mitchell, the units are designed with agro-processors in mind, as they meet international standards. He says each unit has the capacity to accommodate nine individual tenants, who can alter the space to meet required local and international standards and obtain certification for export. We have to ensure that whatever is produced in these buildings satisfy HACCP compliance, good manufacturing processes, as well as the pertinent IOC standards. So during the course of the design of these buildings, we have to stop for a bit, engage the pertinent experts in those areas, and do the necessary adjustments to make sure that what we are doing was fit for purpose. Mr. Bernard says the buildings are also eco-friendly. So we would find that the skylight that we have introduced is to minimize the need for commercial lighting. And additionally, we try to produce as much ventilation to minimize the use of air conditioning. Potential tenants have already been engaged for the units. The time between initiation of operation to prospect, prospective tenancy ranges between nine months and two years. But it is happening. While we may not have control of many factors, and even if we address all the responsibilities that are in our care, there are still delays. And in fact, we are now in the process of activating tenants with whom we would have initiated discussions two years ago. Secretary of Finance and Enterprise Development, Assemblyman Joel Jack, says he is satisfied that the buildings are completed and will soon be occupied. He says the island's processors and light manufacturers now have avenues to expand their business operations and realize their dreams of becoming full-fledged entrepreneurs. I'm Carolyn Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. This marble sign pertaining to church services was installed as part of the restoration project in 2012. The project was completed in early 2013. The Scarborough Methodist Church is one of the oldest church buildings still in use for praise and worship on the island. Now, 2016 was truly a year filled with achievements. This story has details of a group of young men who emerged victorious in the boys' under-15 national football tournament. Here's Omodara Mills with more. The boys and girls of the Bonacord Government Primary School's football teams are passionate about the sport. But it's not just enthusiasm and talent that brought the under-15 teams to their second straight finals in the Atlantic National Primary School Football League, where the boys retained their trophy. We've been looking over this, these kids on a weekend, on any opportunity to play football. Any visiting team come from Trinidad, anywhere in the world come. We try to put a team from Bonacourt government that match the age group. So this is our, this is our, um, our vehicle for um, success, we think. Head coach Ronald Koo says it's the work off the field that has allowed the school to be successful in recent seasons. Bonacol Government School is blessed to have a very strong support structure. Um, so starting with the commitment from the principal, the vice principal, um, the commitment from the players, and of course we have a strong technical team. The boys beat Enterprise Government Primary of Trinidad 2-0 to lift the title again. The players gave their assessments of the game. During the game, I was very eager to score a goal, and I'm happy I scored one. I felt proud because we won. I think we should have looked better. We suffered proud miss, miss because last year we last year we miss, and this year we win again. Miss, I'm Mickey Bego proud, and it's really proud. Principal of the school, Ms. Desma Frank, says she was delighted with her students' performances this season. Well, I feel very proud. I feel ecstatic. But however, it was expected. Because of the kind of coaching that they had and because of the kind of showing that they would have put on, they were well coached and so on. They were well trained. They were well disciplined in their football. So I really expected that. 
The school is already planning for the next season, which they hope will be even more successful. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. In 2014, the National Trust of Trinidad and Tobago had the honor of presenting the Scarborough Methodist Church with the Heritage Preservation Award. They were recognized for being one of the best small historic projects within Trinidad and Tobago. Tobago's youths are so talented, and of course, that's no surprise. But allow me to tell you something you don't know. Pupils of Tobago participated in the secondary school's track and field championships in Trinidad, bringing home Tobago's 26th athletic title. Here's more. They were given a welcome fit for champions. That's because these junior athletes retained the Champion District Trophy for the 26th consecutive time in the 2016 National Secondary Schools Track and Field Championships. Tobago's athletes conquered the 100 meters hurdles, 400 meters hurdles, high jump, javelin throw and a number of other disciplines. They tallied 1,176.5 points, almost 300 more than the second placed team. Going to Trinidad, I'm competing, it's a learning experience for everyone, even if we have done it for a long while, we still encounter certain obstacles that we have to overcome and we try to give it our best shot. Five Tobago schools finished in the top ten, with Bishops High School winning the overall school title. Anya Akili of Bishops is the Victrix Ludorum of the Games. She won gold in the girls under 18 100 and 400 meters hurdles and the long and high jump events. Their homecoming celebrations were mixed with pride and inspiring advice. Continue to feel proud. Continue to encourage all the other students in your school to do just as well as you have done in sports. And I tell you something, sometimes you feel, OK, I'm an athlete and I can't do well in academics. You can do it. Let me hear you say, I can do it. Let me hear you say, I can do it. Just as you have done excellently in sports, I know you can do well in your academics as well. The young athletes were also encouraged to use their success as motivation to achieve more. The successes that you bring to Tobago, 26 years and counting, needs to be maintained. You need to continue to represent us well. You need to continue to represent yourself well. Sport is a vehicle that everyone can use for better lives. The Division of Education, Youth Affairs and Sport continues to support the students as they develop their athletic abilities. I'm Kundi Freitas for Let's Talk Tobago. And it's time to have your say, the segment of our program where we hear from our viewers. Now we've spent close to 30 minutes strolling down memory lane, recapping the stories that changed our lives, brought us joy, inspired us and caused us to reflect. So today we're asking, what's your New Year's resolution? While you think about it, let's see who had their say this week. I wish I had enough money to build a house and buy a car. Thank God for life, health and strength. Me, me say another year, year. And I hope to win the lotto this year. For the new year, people have to change their ways and live good, live, live for one another. Let me go back to the way we take a village for a child and everybody will be good and happy. Let me do the right things. I just praying for good health and strength to take me through. Because like, it's not nothing good coming. So I just want health just to keep me. Just to keep me strong to fight against any storm. We close another edition of Let's Talk Tobago and as always, we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program and be sure to visit our website, like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and productive week.